Um, before we start, Ma uh, Patrick's watching. Hey, Patrick. Hi, Patrick. He's uh, he, he sent me a Facebook a Facebook Messenger. He sent me a Facebook Messenger, and oh, yeah, Patrick, I'm here. He says, "Are you not there?" He just said, <laughs> "I'm here, Patrick." So there we go. So we got that out of the way. And honestly, you guys, uh, the Facebook thing. I'm on Facebook, S Steve Bennett. For those, I see some new faces. And how long we've we been doing this now, you and I specifically? It's got to be a couple more than a couple of years now, I think. And I still get contact from people on Facebook. Um, for those of you who don't know who I am, Steve Bennett, like I just said, but I'm a dad. I'm a dad of two boys, a husband for the last 33 years, uh, my very patient wife. And um, <laughs> because it's like having three children, I'm sure, with my, my boys and me. And um, I, I actually, you know what? I was Dave sitting there when I'm sitting down. He's, I've been gone for a while because I, I, I just took a break. I took a holiday. And just standing up here, I feel a little emotional because I do miss you guys. And, and, and I remember being in your shoes looking at somebody like me going, yeah, he just says he misses. But he, you know, what, what is he? I truly do because I share a lot of your, your upbringings and a lot of, a lot of the things we have, unfortunately for us, we have too much in common. But what I want to share is what, what can be changed from that past and how our future and how our lives can be radically changed by believing in Jesus, by following the Bible. In understanding who we are in God, I was trying, honest to goodness, I'm trying not to cry. I feel like I'm going to weep here just all of a sudden. I don't know why. But the, um, and I know it sounds sappy. And, and you know what? It's funny. Is Mike, Mikey's not here. He's like, Steve, you always cry. I never cry. But this is the place that I do get a little emotional. Oh, that and then if I see my children. Oh, hell, so updates. So for people who don't know, my young, I have, like I said, I got two boys. My younger son has been away since the middle of May at a fishing resort working there. And he came back, he came back uh, beginning of September, so my wife and I blubbered over that, we did. Gave him hugs, he's big, and came back with a girlfriend and then didn't have a girlfriend, so that was that, that, was that there was that to deal with. That was fun as a parent. And then, um, my, and then my, my uh, we just came back, my, both my boys, I just came back from a big camping trip and uh, it was nice to have all my little bear cubs in the same tent with me, screwing around, being monkeys, and just doing stuff that mom doesn't enjoy, shooting things and stuff like that. It was a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, sorry. I, I know I'm jumping all over here, but, yeah, again, my name's Steve Bennett. If you guys ever want to reach out or, or a friend, I'm not that I'm begging for friends because I'm really not, <laughs> but, uh, like I say, if you're guys over the years, they still contact me on Facebook through fa Facebook Messenger. Hey, Steve, I'm, I, I, I'm feeling lonely. Steve, you got a minute. I've said it a thousand times, and I'll say it again. As long as I'm awake and not at work, I will talk to you. I would rather any one of you say, Steve, can, I, I feel like I'm going to do something stupid, or Steve, I'm at the end. I would rather sit there and talk, and my wife and my family knows if I'm sitting at the TV's on, especially if it's during Jeopardy, because I love Jeopardy, but if I'm texting somebody on Jeopardy, my, my mom, my mom, my, my wife, <laughs> there's something there, right? <laughs> there's something there for sure that, that uh, understands, and so don't ever feel uh, 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 shy about contacting me, because I will, I will answer you. Um... I think that's pretty much it. Oh, and uh, yeah, that's it. That, that's kind of up to date now. And I'll just get my uh, computer open again. So we're going to read out of Luke 11. And you know what? I <laughs> I got Billy Graham up here already. I uh, I was sorry. Luke 10. Luke 10. You got uh, off the NLT. Are you up there? What's that? Luke 10? Luke 1. Oh, not Luke 10, 1. Well, you know what? I can read it just the same. You got it, Dave? We'll figure it out. Okay. 
I'll get my handy. D- <laughs> I remember my kids. I don't know if you guys, you guys have kids, but there was, bl- you guys might remember because you got older kids, Blue's Clues, my handy dandy notebook. <laughs> Luke. Well, nice, nice. Well, I, for years, for years before I had kids, I used to do uh, uh, Special Olympics. I used to be a coach for track and field. And one of the athletes, he always carried a blue notebook. And I would ask him to do things. He'd just, let me just whip out my handy dandy notebook. He would say it every time I'd ask to do something. And he'd pretend right. It was very cute. But now I have my handy dandy notebook. We got it? Is that? Oh, uh, 25. Luke, 25. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. There we go. Okay, so <laughs> I was wondering if I was going to be a little bit rusty after a while. But anyhow, so I kind of like the story. And you know what? I started I started uh, uh, writing it <laughs> this afternoon as I was way b- I was totally procrastinated. And then I changed it all halfway through. But And then I feel like I want to change it again. But I'm going to read it. Jesus... Uh, <laughs> it's about the good parable of the Good Samaritan. Uh, Jesus replied with a story. Oh, s- sorry, 25. This is, this is how d- One day, an expert in religious law stood up at, to test Jesus. Now, in a different translation, it says a lawyer. I don't know what that means, what, what the difference is. But this translation says, an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him a question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? And when I read that, I just sort of glazed over it. And uh, so please pay attention to eternal life. Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? And how do you read it? And the, uh, the man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told him. Do this and you will live. The man wanted to justify his actions, so he asked. Uh, this is funny, because I, I, when I reread it again, there's another thing I caught, too. So, so the, the paragraph here, love your neighbor as yourself. I don't know about you or who your roommate is currently, but sometimes your neighbor's not that great, right? So <laughs> this is what the guy's getting at, the, 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 the expert. So just what do you mean by neighbor? The jerk that I got to sleep with that snores all the time in my, and sharing the room with? Or that guy that plays the music too loud at, at, at the, uh, across, the, I got a neighbor, I got a neighbor that every Saturday night just cranks it to 11. 11, he's got the oof, 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 oof. He's got the lights going and everything. But when I go to the other side of my house, I can't hear it. I know you might be able to hear it from your house, but I don't, it drives me crazy. But, uh, but I'm supposed to love him too. So, so the, <laughs> Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho, or down to Jericho, sorry, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, they beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant, another translation says a Levite, uh, walked over and looked at him lying there. But he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised man, a despised Samaritan came along. And just so you know, when they say despised, there it is, a certain, oh, see, you had certain man. Your version's much nicer than mine. <laughs> so a Samaritan was a person that was half Jew and half uh, uh, Gentile, non-Jewish. And they were dis- despised people because they were not of pure Jew or not of they just weren't Jewish. Uh, um, sorry. Then a despised man, came, a Samaritan man, came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day, he la- handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who, attacked, who was attacked by bandits, Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. 
then Jesus said, go now and do the same. And I just was struck with a very vivid memory of when I was younger. And for some of you who, who, who don't know, my family was a family. I had a father that was a super abusive father in every respect of the word. And I was just talking to somebody earlier. And, and I lived in a small town. And in a, in, in a small town, everybody knew everybody's business. And uh, and so even the, my neighbor who was abusive to his children was like, whoa, your dad is abusive, but I'm, a, I'm abusive, but your dad's even more abusive. And he walked over to my dad. My dad used to like to loan us as tools. Like if you, need, if you needed wood chopped, he'd come over to my dad and go, hey, can I borrow your kids? I need some wood chopped. I need some trees falling. And we would be there for a day or whatever, stack wood. We'd get pop and sandwiches. That was plenty pay just to get a break wake from my father but it says here uh, he felt compassion for him and I remember my neighbor said to my dad hey I need your kid he literally said I need your kid to dig some holes and my dad was like sure take the shovels no 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 I got the shovels but what my neighbor had done he had just finished a pool and he'd seen my brother and I working, in the, and we had a big yard, and literally we broke rocks with sledgehammers and pins and broke them and rolled them. If they were too big for us to roll, we broke them into rolling sizes, and then we rolled them at the top of all the other ridiculousness. So my neighbor said, Steve, and, and my brother, his name's Eric, he said, just get in the pool. I don't want you to do anything. I want you to have one, some, one day in the summer where you can just be a kid for a day. That's totally, that, that memory totally struck me. I felt compassion for him. And, and, and then my, so my brother and I, when we were playing in the water, we were trying not to splash, which is, and we were laughing, we're like, final whisper, laugh, maybe we're like, shut up, dad's going to hear us. And my neighbor, but you know, he's bringing his fresh made lemonade, and we're having lemonade, and we're having sandwiches, and we're swimming. And my dad heard my brother and I laugh, and, he's, and I, he stuck his head over the fence, and then there's a whole pile of words that I won't say out of respect for here. And we were back busting rocks, soaking wet. But I'm going to go back to the beginning of this. The, the, for eternal life. And <coughs> the, I, I, I think I, oh, here it is right here. Sorry. I want to show you. My computer's not going to work for me. Oh, there it is. Deuteronomy. Actually, I want Leviticus. You're going to see how bad I am with the New Testament when I've got to do this a couple times. But it says to, to love the Lord your God with all your soul. And I'll get it later. With all your soul and all your, all your heart. And I can't I, that's a high, that's a big ask. Like I just explained, <laughs> illustrated, we got <laughs> all your soul and all your heart and, and, and love your neighbor as yourself. Nobody, I don't, I'm a, I got like to think I'm a pretty good guy now. I like most people most of the time. I don't love everybody all the time. I really don't. <laughs> that's why I went camping with my kids. I do love them all the time, but it's nice to get away so I don't have to listen to my neighbor. Or I don't have to, it's just, you know what I'm getting at. And I like, and I like, I like Jesus when he talks to people too. He says, uh, <laughs> I remember my kids would ask me questions about their homework and I'm, I'm like, well, what does your homework say? And Jesus says to him, well, how do you read the law? Right? Take a look at it again, young fella, lawyer or, or expert, right? He says, to, with all your heart. And there's only one person that I can think of, regardless of how stupid we are, other than, actually, I, can, I know my mother, for the most part, loves me <laughs> all the time, and I love my children regardless. As a parent, that's what... We're called to do, and I love, sincerely love my children all the time, without fail. 
But to ask to love my neighbor all the time without fail is a big ask. And, and I, I really do like the sense of humor that this guy has. He says, well, who's my neighbor going to be? If I'm supposed to love everybody as much, I mean, are you talking about the Jewish guy next door? Are you talking about the leper? Because back then they had lepers. My, my leper, I see the leper. My leper. I see the leper on the, on the side of the road all the time. Is that the neighbor I'm supposed to love? Because he's dirty and gross. What about the beggar? Am I supposed to him? There's the, when, you, when you start thinking about that, it's a big ask. What about, what about the homeless person? What about the guy that bullied you in high school? You know what's funny? I'll tell you a funny story. I, know, I was just telling somebody about my ADHD sometimes, but this reminded me of it. <laughs> Facebook again, right? So I'm on Facebook. I'm 55 years old, for those of you who don't know. And some guy who was like the biggest bully in high school to me, he was just a jerk. I was, I was going to say another word. He was just a jerk. And he's like, hey, buddy, how you doing? Let's be Facebook friends. And I'm like, swipe. <laughs> nope. And I, I know that's awesome. But I'm supposed to love him, too. This is what we're called to do, right? Like, this is how impossible uh, I, I find it or how overwhelming I find it. And, and, and even this, this, this at the, the expert, am I supposed to love the, the Sumerian? Like, a couple months ago, we were talking about, oh, like, um, there's the maps up there. But the guys would go around, go around to get away from Samaria. And all the people that they didn't like, they went around the extra, you know, miles. Just so they didn't have to go through the middle of, the, of like, Wally. Right? They go, the, they go to White Rock, and then they go, go around to, to, to get away from Wally. So they wouldn't, because it's whatever. I'm just picking Wally, so if you're from Wally, I, please forgive me. I don't have nothing against Wally. I learned that at my, my new management course, how not to tick people off on purpose. And um, so the man, this Jew, the Jewish man, he, it, I started thinking about some of, some of the things and some of, uh, some of the, 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 the fellows I've met at Hillen and, and some of our past too. And so he, he goes for a travel. He's, now he's on his journey. And it made me think about our journey from when, we're, when we were kids. When, when, when I can remember when my father would say things to me that were so, 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 so disarming. And, and this is ex stripped me of my clothes and beat me up and left me for dead on the road. That's exactly how I felt after his words or his actions. And this guy, he sees a priest, a priest, a man who's supposed to be a man of God. And a man who, he figures, I mean, this guy's beaten to dead, he, beaten to de half to death, and he's crushed, and he can't move, and he's stuck in the, he's lying there in the ditch, different translations say. And it made me think of uh, when I was at my lowest of my low. I couldn't move. I couldn't get up. I... I would just, I can remember having friends visit, and as soon as that door would close, I would lay on the ground and just sob for my emptiness and my loneliness. And for being beaten down from, some, from my father, who, who was supposed to be my cheerleader. And, and as a dad, as a dad of two, honestly, you guys, some, I don't know if any of you guys here have met my boys. I think, Scott, you've met my boys, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, a while ago. Some of the other guys, I don't think any of the other guys have, but my boys are awesome. And I know I'm just their dad and I'm saying they're awesome, but they're awesome. They're men that you would shake. They're young men now, and I'm going to cry because I love my children. You would meet them, and you'd see that these are men who have never had a hand smacked to them, who have never been told a word that they're useless, who have never been told that they're not loved. Never. And you see what that makes in a human being? You see what that does to a, 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 a boy who's never been told those words? Who's been, been, been given nothing but love? Instead of feeling empty and depressed and addicted and wanting to give up. And this poor man of Jerusalem reaches out to a, pri a, a priest who's supposed to have compassion and the guy walks around him. 
I want nothing to do with him. And I can remember, excuse me, I got a hair on my face. And I, I can remember that being a young man, reaching out to people. And I remember my brother vividly telling me how he had done the same. And he got abused by the person that, 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 that he reached out to. And, and then the, the second person, the, the temple assistant, who, like I say in another translation, calls him a Levite. He's supposed to be a very special Jewish person, right? He's supposed to be, they're both supposed to be people of the show compassion. They're representatives of God. And God's greatest commandment is to love one another. The greatest commandment is to love. And they walk around. He walks around them. He wants nothing to do with them. And then, honestly, my translation says a despised Samaritan. He walks up to him and takes care of him. The people that lent me hands when I was a young man who showed me compassion, I will never forget for the rest of my life. And, and I want to say something or what David... Or, I'm locking up for words. But David said earlier, if you guys, if this is your second, third, fourth, I don't care how many times you've come here. Honestly, if you see us smiling, I am happy to see you here than there. I am happy to see your face, your alive, fresh face. I'm a, I'm a, I would rather see you here crying every, every Saturday. I would rather see you sitting here getting bored. I would rather see you. I would rather see you here than than the than the other two alternatives. Never see you again, or see you struggling, wishing you could find another find the answer. So, and the other thing is, honestly, the reason I, I can speak for myself, and I think I'm speak for Dave too. The reason we're here is we want to hear your story. We want to hear what happened. We want, there's, there is freedom in, in, in sharing that because I share it as much as I can with gentlemen like yourselves and ladies too because there's a couple of you. And, 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 and honestly, and I don't, make them, I don't want you to feel uncomfortable about what either because I enjoy, it's not that I, it's not I, take a, I take, joy isn't the word I'm looking for. I want to hear it because I know it helps. So now, a despised man comes along, and he does. He shows. He shows the love that Jesus is talking about, and that Jesus, he, he, he soothes his wounds. He cleans them. He wraps bandages around him. And hopefully, that's what part of when you give your life to Jesus, when you realize that his, his purpose of dying on the cross is to show you that you are forgiven of everything that you did to survive to get here. Everything. Everything that you hold in your head that went, why did I do that? Or why do I remember that? Or why am I like I am now? Why can't I be I wish I was. He came here to wrap and soothe those wounds and tell you that you are loved. He won't give you the wine, though. You don't want to have the wine. That's, he'll wrap you in the bandages and give you the love. And he'll, it says he'll put you, he put, he put the man on his, don, on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day he handed the innkeeper two silver coins. The ultimate price was more than two silver coins. It was the cross for the rest of your life. For the rest of your life. And if there's anything going on in your head right now that's saying that you are not worthy and that what you've done is unforgivable, that's also a lie. That is a lie and is a lie put there by the, the thief of all thieves that comes to kill and, and to destroy Jesus say, says, he came, he, I came that you may have life more abundantly. And when I say abundantly, gentlemen, 
is never being addicted again, is never having to worry about being addicted, addicted again. It's saying you'll have your children back, that you'll be a whole man again, that your, chil- that your children will love you and do love you, that they do love you. For a man that he felt, com- it, it's to say which of these three w- would you say was the neighbor, uh, was the neighbor to the man. I can think of a couple people in my life who were, who were this neighbor, and I hope, I honestly hope that some that I can be that neighbor for you guys too. But the ultimate is not me. I'm just Steve, and I'm a screw-up sometimes, a lot of times. Just ask my wife. Really, I got in an argument with my wife the other day, and she just looked at me. <laughs> and she just looked at me and went, you need to talk to your maker. I swear to God she said that to me. You were having an argument, and she's like, go talk to your maker right now, please. Because you were talking like an idiot. She did, legit. And this is what I got to deal with. And she's right, though. She's right. The greatest neighbor... The greatest advocate, the greatest forgiver of whatever it was that took, got you here and but has kept you alive, whatever you beat yourself up over with, he is here to give you life abundantly and get rid of that. And that's my message. And before we go, or, I, sorry, I can't see it, but I hope, I hope, you guys stick around, and I'm going to stick around here for prayer requests. If, if anybody has any, or, or if anybody has any questions, David and I are, are happy to answer any questions. Like I say, don't run off. I know everybody runs off when they say don't run off, but everybody runs off. I don't know what you're running to. I really don't, but you, you can run. I don't care, but if you have questions, I will drive you home. I got a truck with four. No, I don't. I have my wife's car. But I, it's so close, but I hate that car, too. It hurt my back. But anyhow, that's a different story. And um, honestly, if you, if you have anything on your mind or on your heart that you want to talk about, I'm, I'm here to listen to it. And, and uh, I just want to pray before we go. Bow our heads. Lord Jesus, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for each and every person here. I thank you for, the, I thank you for your message. And... I hope my prayer is that there was decisions made tonight. Life-changing decisions to, to, to follow you, Lord God. A decision that and an understanding that you are love, that you died because you love us. That God loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son for us. And that we can know love again, Lord Jesus. And we can know freedom and who we are in you, Lord Jesus. In your precious name, Lord God, I thank you so much for listening to us and being there for us when we constantly screw up. In your precious name, amen.